Hi, welcome to The Whole Message with Mark and Melody sitting here this morning enjoying our coffee beverage. Cafe. <laughs> Cafe. Cafe. Oh, there, Postum was off the market for years now. Postum is back. What's Postum? Postum is another mm-hmm. beverage that is supposed to be similar to coffee, but there's no bad chemicals, additives in it, no caffeine. Mm-hmm. So it's not coffee, but it's a beverage that simulates coffee, mm-hmm. just like soy milks. Mm-hmm. For milk. Well, you're the expert at this. Oh, well. I was a coffee drinker for many, many, many years. Uh, pot a day, you mm-hmm. know, two pot a day type of thing. I got to the point where every time I was drinking coffee, I'd be sick. I quit drinking coffee. I was fine. I started drinking coffee again. Boom, I got sick, sick again. Sick and how? Sick and how? Just the, the cold and, you know, congestion and, you know, fevers and chills. And, I mean, I was sick. I mean, you know. Well, flam, I remember flam. for a couple times you were on and the then, road. And then and I were... quit drinking coffee and I was fine. I started drinking coffee again. Same problem. Quit. And I don't know if there's something they're putting in that coffee or what. But, it, it could be. So. I'm not I'm not sure of that, but I do know yeah. it's a stimulant. So I finally quit drinking the coffee. Co- coffee's a drug. It's a stimulant. For the longest time I haven't had coffee. but And, and parents yeah. will let their children drink caffeine. It's the number one wow. stimulant that's sold out there. Mm-hmm. And it's free to anybody of age. Interesting. And and they shouldn't. You know, for every cup of so. coffee you drink, you need now that much more water. Hmm. Not counting the eight glasses of water you should have in a day, at minimum, wow. depending on your body size. But now you've just depleted that in carbonated <laughs> beverages are the same way. They deplete Amazing. the water we have in our body. I think what we need to do is cook. Is give them something so stimulating in the kitchen. I think so. That they're gonna forget Let's all about. It. Let's the go, caffeine drinks. Let's go stimulate them in the kitchen. See, there's lots of ways to use a knife to get your cutting done. But you can also use a food processor. That's got blades. It will do cutting. You've got the Salad Master. I love this thing. Man, you can do a lot of cutting with that. A lot of unique cutting too. And then, the last thing I want to show you is our last form of cutting here, which is going to be... The blender, yes, the blender has blades. And let me tell you, I'm gonna take this uh, thing right here with all my, here's some radish leaves I can put in here. Here's some radishes right here. So throw those in there. What else we got in here? Oh, look at all these carrots and celery down here. Even these cores, look at the, the little pieces there. I mean, you can throw everything. I'm not gonna put the cauliflower in there. Um, Oh, all this cucumber, look at all this. Because, you know, most people would end up putting this in the trash or in a compost or something like that. Lots of cucumber. Look at that. Lots of cucumber in there. Oh, look at all that cucumber. And just put that right there. We'll get this out of the way. And uh, let's see if that's going to be enough. And I got a little water here to thin it down if I need to, which I'm probably going to have to. So we'll put some in there and get this baby blended. Some people like juicing, I like blending. Just like that, I have got a fantastic blended drink. Add a little bit of salt to it. Wow. It's like a V8, except without all the processing. And it is so good. Take your leftover pieces, set them aside. Then you can do a blended drink 
and you're good to go. The rest of this, you can throw it in a so stock pot or use it for compost. Um, but the bottom line is get chopping, get your knife out, start cutting some food, get your refrigerator set up like a salad bar, start eating whole natural foods instead of these processed foods that you don't need a knife for. That's the problem is people are sitting here going to the processed food so they don't have to learn how to use a knife. And it's so easy once you do it a couple times and get yourself set up and you are going to live a healthier life. So that's our program for today. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, you know, share everything we do with uh, friends and family and we'll see you next time in the kitchen. Hey everybody, I've got a, another interesting website I want to share with you. It's called Authority uh, Nutrition. And uh, you never know what you're going to find out there on the internet. But I thought this was kind of interesting and figured we'd go over it real quick and catch all their mistakes. <laughs> uh, six things the world's most successful diets have in common. Okay, six things the most successful diets have in common. Many diets have stood the test of time. They become popular uh, a long time ago, but people still doing them and still getting results, uh, including the Mediterranean diet, low-carb diet, paleo diet, whole foods, plant-based diets. Uh, so they've got a few of them included in there. That's pretty good. Uh, of course, there's always going to be a debate and um, things like that. But here are the six things that successful diets have in common. So I thought this would be kind of, and by the way, you got to understand what they're talking about here. They're talking about diets for losing weight. They're not talking about diets for successful health because the paleo diet is not going to be a healthy diet. The low carb diet is definitely not a healthy diet. And the Mediterranean diet really isn't a healthy diet. Uh, if you do the homework on that. So um, but when it comes to losing weight and being slender, this is what they're looking at. Uh, so number one, they are low in added sugar. Well, that's a great, um, fact. And I think we need to understand that if you want to have a healthy lifestyle and not necessarily diet, a healthy lifestyle, you want it low in added sugar. Um, right now we're just getting bombarded by way too much sugar in our diets, added sugars. And those added sugars is those refined processed sugars, you know, white sugar, beet sugar, things like that. Um, you know, let's stick to the natural sugars. And even there, you don't have to bombard yourself with these natural sugars because of the calories. The, it's got high calorie count and you want to reduce your calorie count. So um, don't load up on those natural sugars either, uh, you know, in moderation. Yes, in moderation. If everything you ate was natural sugar, you'd still be overweight and unhealthy. So, but six common uh, factors here. Uh, they are low in added sugar. Um, number two, they eliminate refined carbohydrates. Here we go. Now, maybe they've got something right here. 
The most common one of refined uh, wheat flour is which consumed in mass amounts in Western countries. Uh, so they've got it right when they're talking about manufactured. Here we go with the two faces of wheat, the two faces of carbs. Uh, you know, you want the complex carbs. You don't want the simple carbs. You know, um, eat wheat, not manufactured wheat chips. Uh, you know, there's a difference here between, you know, eating whole wheat and a Twinkie. They're both wheat, but one is extremely healthy for you and one is extremely unhealthy for you. Uh, so uh, they have this right when it's coming to uh, eliminate refined carbohydrates. I'm sure glad they didn't put eliminate carbohydrates or I'd be all over them. Oh, I'd be ready to just uh, do a little bit of spanking on this one if they had that. <laughs> and you know, I find mistakes, I'm going to point them out. All successful diets have, limin have eliminated refined grains like wheat flour which is very unhealthy. However, some diets take things a step further and eliminate grains altogether, which is not recommended. And wheat flour is okay. They don't have this right. Wheat flour is okay as long as you're doing whole grain and you're not separating the wheat and the germ and the bran and ending up with just one little part of it. You know, you want the whole grain and you can you know, mash it up and make bread out of it. You can mash it up and make cereal out of it but you can't manufacture it, manipulating it uh, to make an unhealthy product. So um, just pointing out the good and bad. Number three, they eliminate industrial vegetable oils. Good job, people. I think they're coming out very well with this. And they've even got sources here. They, got, they can go right to sources too. So that's kind of nice. I'm not going to do that right now, but they do have some pretty good sources on this. Um, you know, eliminate those industrial vegetable oils. Now they came down here though and put in here, keep in mind that this does not apply to coconut oil or olive oil, which are completely different and extremely healthy. That's not true. Uh, coconut oil and olive oil are not completely different. There's a lot of similarities here. And, uh, and they are not extremely healthy. Coconut oil and olive oil are not extremely healthy. You know, people, you, you put this kind of information out there and people are gonna be, you know, going out there guzzling coconut oil and olive oil. And, and there's people that do that that are extremely unhealthy. Um, uh, I would definitely reduce the coconut oil and olive oil as much as you can too. You know, our bodies are not automobiles. We don't need oil to lubricate them. We need water to lubricate them. Uh, so anyway, and there's lots of oils inside the vegetables. That's why I said eat the olive, not the olive oil. Eat the coconut, not the coconut oil. Um, I like cooking. You know, if I'm cooking, I'll, I'll use the coconut oil. I do use some olive oil here and there. So I, you know, um, but I'm not massively using um, a lot of it. Uh, so uh, let's go to number four. They eliminate artificial trans fats. Hey, good idea. And so the top most successful uh, diets to lose weight eliminates the trans fats. Trans fats are highly toxic, made of hydrogenated vegetable oils. Many studies show a link to inflammation and diseases like heart disease. Well, yeah, um, but uh, the hydrogenated is not near as bad uh, the partially hydrogenated is the one that has the most problems with trans fats. Fully hydrogenated is not near uh, the problem. It's the partially hydrogenated that, that, so they just don't know all that, but that's okay. Um, you know, you can stay away from all of them and still be good. Uh, so I'm good with that. Um, number five, they are all high in vegetables and fiber. Well, that's good. You need to eat more vegetables and you need to get more fiber. And of course, you get your fiber from your vegetables, from your carbs. I mean, carbs is big. Uh, you need to get those complex carbs. Uh, that's where you're going to get your fiber. Um, so, uh, bottom line, a successful diet emphasizes uh, eating plenty of vegetables and in most cases, fruit as well. These foods are high in antioxidants and health uh, uh, prebiotic uh, fibers. So, and then the last one is number six. They focus on foods instead of calories. Okay, we'll see what this has to say. 
One interesting thing uh, that all these diets have in common is that none of them emphasize calorie restriction. Uh, instead, they put the emphasis on eating whole, single ingredient healthy foods. Um, here, well, at least they're pointing this out. Although calories are obviously important for weight management, simply restricting calories without regard to the food you eat is rarely effective in the long term. Um, instead, try to lose weight or restrict calories. Make it your goal to nourish your body uh, and become healthier. And the last sentence here, most successful diet emphasize a life change that includes whole foods and let weight loss follow as a natural side effect. Nah, it's not quite the depth that I'm looking for. You have to do calorie reduction if you're going to get weight loss. There's no two ways about it. Now what you're doing by eating healthier foods, especially when you're eating a lot of vegetables and fruits and grains and starches, you get more volume of food and less calories. When you're eating oils, you're getting a lot of calories in a little tablespoon. When you're eating, um, consuming, uh, uh, what else, the oils, um, the sugars, the sugars, you're getting a lot of calories in a little tablespoon, teaspoon. Um, so calories is still the way you lose weight. You have to, every single diet on the planet has some form of calorie restriction. They're not getting this. They're not getting this part, but every single diet on the planet has some form of calorie restriction. Mediterranean diet, they do a lot smaller portions than anybody else, and, and they have their bigger meals earlier in the day. There is a lot of food restriction there. Low-carb diet, you know, the paleo diet, you're eliminating foods. You're eliminating all these processed carbs and healthy carbs. They're eliminating healthy carbs, which is stupid. But, you know, they're eliminating calories. That's what makes them successful because they're doing calorie restriction. If you go on a low-fat diet, you're going to eliminate calories. So you're going to lose weight. Every diet on the planet has some form of calorie restriction. Look at Jenny Craig. Um... Weight Watchers, uh, these type of places, that is all designed on calorie restriction. There, there's portion control, so you're eliminating calories. That is the only way you're ever going to lose weight is by getting your calories lower than the energy that you're burning. You know, if you exercise more, you know, you're not going to have to do that calorie restriction either. You know, bottom line, you know, you're, if your calories is up here and your energy going out is here, you're going to gain weight. So you either have to lower your calorie or increase your energy going out. That's, that's the only, you know, it's not rocket scientists, but that's the way it works, you know. Um, now, when it comes to health, okay, that's just weight, okay, that's just weight, but Diet has a few factors. One of them is weight, okay? The other one is health. There's a lot of people who are overweight uh, that are perfectly healthy because they're eating a healthier diet. You know, you can eat a healthy diet and still be overweight because you're, you still got to reduce your calories. So, you know, let's look at when it comes to overall health. These are some of the worst diets you could ever have. A plant-based diet would be the best, but these other ones would be the worst diets. You know, you don't want to go on a low-carb diet. You're going to end up with the highest heart disease of anybody on the planet. And same with Mediterranean diets. You know, they have high, high heart disease. Uh, paleo diets, you know, if you do the homework on these things, the plant strong. By the way, the Mediterranean diet actually eats a lot more uh, fruits and vegetables and grains too. So it's not as bad as these other ones, uh, just to point that out. But, you know, if you want to live a healthy life, you've got to go on a plant-strong lifestyle, eating lots of complex carbs, fruits and vegetables, grains and oats, things like that. Now, if all you want to do is lose weight, you can, you can go on any diet plan uh, because you're going to get a calorie restriction and you're going to lose weight. But it doesn't mean you're going to be healthy. 
you're taking additional risks that you don't need to. So eat the plant strong. We show you how to do that. That's the whole purpose of this. And uh, we want to give you the whole message, not just bits and pieces of it. So there you go. And we'll see you next time. Interestingly enough, Abby and I have a common friend. Do you know who Drusilla is? Yes. Do you know who Drusilla is? We've had Drusilla here. We were doing some... Uh, um, Sermosas? Samosas. Samosas. Yes. They're doing some samosas. And I'm sitting here, my brain is saying, you know what? I want to turn those into a number of different things. And so Abby comes over and she says, oh, I've made those before. And I was like, really? Now, how did you, where, where did you start making these? Um, actually, my mom got the recipe and then I just kind of watched her and now I know how to do them. Right. And mostly what they were doing was the Kenya the yeah. spices, the flavors, which mm -hmm. a lot of people are not too comfortable with. I'm so comfortable with it. I thought we'd do something different and uh, create them with some barbecue ones. Mm -hmm. So you've got the wraps there. You're going to cut those babies in half. I've got the uh, filling, which is right here. What do you think? Is that going to work for filling? Mm -hmm. uh, I heated it up. It's actually cooled down a little bit here. So that'll be ready for the filling. And pan's ready to go. Um, you need some glue, right? Mm-hmm. Super glue? Mm, no, just flour and water. You don't want to use super glue, huh? No, that's not edible. <laughs> At least I, I'm sure it's not edible. See, I can move. You go through all of them at once. You've done this before, haven't you? Ah, oh, the last one red. Oh, didn't cut through it all the way. Oh. So the whole trick is how thick you want the glue. Mm. Well, thicker than I, that. I don't, that's a little bit too thick. Really? Yeah. I it's thought just, it was too thin. No. Just add a little bit more water. I think it needs less water. No, it needs more water. I think it needs less water. Really? Remember last time when he didn't listen to me? It was yeah. Pancake. And it turned out perfect. Okay, well, maybe. Uh, you need more water because you have to dip your finger in it and then do the cold. I think this is perfect. No, it's not perfect. Are you sure? Yes, it needs to be watery. I don't know. Okay. Ah, that's probably too much water now. You said to add more water. Uh, it's perfect now. Okay, what do you think? Like that? Yes. Okay, so is that the texture you want? Sure, why not? Abby's actually done this recipe more than I have. But exactly. once again, once you learn a concept, then you can change it into a whole bunch of different recipes. That, that should be plenty. That okay. should be plenty. Then you can change it into a whole bunch of different recipes. Like I suggested a dessert one. Yes, and if we get time, we'll definitely have to do some of that. Yeah. So, okay. Okay, so um, you show me what you gotta do. Okay, so what you do is you take your tortilla, you fold it over like this. See, it's too thick. Shouldn't be, yeah. Oh well. I think it'll be perfect. Then Trust you, me. And you just kind of rub it, and then you go boop, and bada bing, bada boom, you got a comb. Okay. Now what I saw was like this. See, it's not sticking together. And then like this, okay. And you just go on half like that, and then. Or like that. That way works. You've got to hold this baby together for a second, right? Yeah. Unless you think it's too thick or too thin. I think it's too thin. Too thick. Huh? It's too thick. This one's holding. Look at that. This one's holding. This one will too. So you just got to hold it for a second? Mm -hmm. Is that what you think? Yeah. Okay. See, now it's not falling apart. Now are you going to let these dry a little bit then? or? Yeah, you just let them dry and then okay. make some more. So we'll do some cones here. Mm -hmm. TPs, if you will.
All right, hey, we got those done. Now what are we gonna do with them? Now what are we gonna do with them? You're still gonna need this, right? I know, just put it up there. This is basically a group recipe today. All right, so we're gonna take and stuff this with some stuffing right about to there. And then we're gonna fold this this way Put some glue right here and then fold it the other way, right? Mm hmm. And then pinch the ends together. I need a. Yeah. <laughs> that towel comes in handy, doesn't it? Mm hmm. And then pinch the ends. You see, if you fill them like that, it'll be just. I like your idea too about the ceiling them at the top. Doing the fruit one, huh? Oh, I thought you were talking about the ceiling them at the top. I like your idea about the fruit one. Thank you. I think we can do some fruit ones here. The pie? It'd be like a like a hot apple pie or hot cherry pie. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Which one do you want me to start with here? Um, take any one of these. Okay. And soon any one of those. Soon. Very soon. Just this one. Just go. go. Just stick your finger in there. Do a little glue. So glue wise, it either has to be thinner or thicker. That's the. My mom whole makes trick it really it. She watery. She makes hers thinner, and, and uh, the way I was looking, I was doing it thicker. So. Yeah, whenever um, my mom does it, she makes it super thin. Like, but there we go. I got water. one done just like that. <laughs> um, hold on, be careful on that. It's all not sealed. Oh, I see. You're really pointing, pushing down on the, the... Yeah, I just glue it like in between and then I push it. Okay. See, now they're all sealed up perfectly. Well, almost perfectly. And my thought, too, here is that I just want to pan fry them a little bit like this. Instead of deep frying them like Miss Paris does. Yeah, because uh, they're, they're, it's less oil, and all I did was spray the pan a little bit. And then what we'll do, if you made a bunch of these, you can put them in the oven. And then, you know, kind of keep them warm in the oven until you're ready for all of them uh, to get done. Does that sound good? Here. Yeah. Yeah, they're really good. Mm, I love these things. Money back guarantee. If you're not completely satisfied, send it back for a full refund. Kind of hard to do that when we give the recipes out for free, right? So what else do you think we could put in here? Um, you can make pies or anything, really. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Pies. That's good. That's really good. Pie. Give me a pie. Cherry pie. Um, um, no, I'm stuck. Usually I'm the one that's not stuck. Um, uh, chicken pot pie. Go ahead. You can do that too. What else? Give me a pie. Mm. Apple. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, how about, uh, um, <laughs> what about beef stew? If I did a beef stew and threw that in there? I think that would be too liquidy. Make it really thick though. So it's really got to be thick on the Kind of like a gravy. Yeah. And yeah, that might work. So fruit pies, you can savory seal it up pies, with gravy. Seal it up with gravy. Yeah. Um, Either it has to be really thin or really thick. Plop a couple of these in some mashed potatoes. What they use is they have this chapati and mm -hmm. then they have ugali and then they kind of just eat it together. Chapati and ugali? Yeah. You really got these down to a science. She knows more about this than I do. Let me tell you. I Amen. go over their house a lot. <laughs> oh, so you that's why you've helped cook these things and um, but they've Eat just done too. it with a different personality. 
and we're just gonna turn it into an American barbecue. Yeah. So, all right. There we go. That's our program for today, and we'll see you next time in the kitchen. Hey everybody, Mark Anthony here with another intelligent uh, segment about uh, what you need to do to live a healthier life. And today, I uh, wanted to share with you a little bit about the best cooking methods. And uh, there are some differences. Uh, uh, of course, uh, health-wise, you know, we like to have a lot of raw foods. Uh, I really do uh, recommend more raw foods. Uh, but there are some things you can cook and actually get more nutrients out of them when they're cooked. Uh, and Dr. Michael Greger sent us over a video that we can air uh, about his science when it comes to the best cooking methods. So let's take a look. You may remember back in volume two, I compared the effects of different cooking methods on the phytonutrients in broccoli. Well, last year, food scientists outdid themselves. They looked at 20 different vegetables, six different cooking methods, and then looked at three separate measures of antioxidant activity. Uh, that's over 300 separate experiments to figure out what's the best way to cook our vegetables. First, though, let's figure out the worst. In terms of loss of antioxidant content, baking, boiling, frying, George Foreman, nuking, or pressure cooking, the worst is boiling. What's the second worst? The pressure cooking. When we use these wet cooking methods, some of the nutrition is lost into the cooking water. Uh, maybe less than you think, though. I mean, averaged over those 20 vegetables, boiling only removes about 14% of the antioxidants. So if you really like boiled broccoli, fine. Just eat one more florette. Seven florets of boiled broccoli has all the antioxidant power of six florets of raw broccoli. So the best way to eat your veggies is really whichever way will get you to eat the most of them, with the exception of frying, oh. which just adds way too many empty calories. What's the gentlest cooking method, though? Out of these remaining four, which preserves antioxidants the best? It was the microwave, preserving 97.3% of the antioxidants. But that's on average across 20 vegetables. There was one vegetable whose antioxidants get clobbered no matter how you cook it. Up to 75% of the antioxidant power gone. Which is the one vegetable really best to eat raw? Artichoke hearts, asparagus, beets, broad beans, broccoli. Hope we don't have to eat raw Brussels sprouts. Cauliflower, carrots, celery, eggplant, garlic, green beans, leeks. Corn on the cob, onions, peas, bell pepper, spinach, Swiss chard, or zucchini. The most vulnerable vegetable is bell peppers. Do try to eat those raw. On the other hand, there were three vegetables that weren't affected by cooking at all. You could even boil them and lose no antioxidants. Can you guess at least one of the three? The three were artichokes beets, and onions boil away. Asparagus actually gets honorable mention here, unaffected by all but frying, so you can boil asparagus too. Final question, and uh, perhaps most interesting, there are two vegetables that no matter what you do to them, they increase in antioxidant value. They become healthier. Which two are they? First, the honorable mention, green beans. With the exception of boiling and pressure cooking, they actually increase in antioxidant power when you cook them. So microwave green beans are actually healthier than raw green beans. But which two vegetables always increase in value no matter how you cook them? Carrots and celery. Oh. So when you make a nice vegetable soup, we're actually boosting the nutrition. Huh. Well, isn't that interesting? I, you got me on this one, Michael. <laughs> I'm going to have to send you a thank you note for that particular video because who would have thought that your carrots and celery actually increase in nutritional value regardless of how you cook them. Uh, and I love cooking with celery and carrots and onions too. So uh, 
that's your mirepoix blend right there. Uh, and the peppers actually lose uh, nutritional value regardless of how you cook them. My wife is going to love that because she hates cooked peppers. Uh, but, you know, this is the science. This is the information that you need uh, to understand to live a healthier life. Bottom line, eat every one of these as much as you want, as often as you want, however you want to cook them or eat them raw. Uh, you know, because we just need more of this in our diet. Uh, and I'm sure there's other elements here, uh, potatoes and uh, uh, sweet potatoes, things like that. Um, you know, there's a lot more information out there, but we show you one bite at a time. And uh, we'll see you next time. Hi, and welcome to another cooking segment with Mark and Melody in the kitchen. This has got to be a fun one. It is. It's the holidays. And Melody has a pumpkin. Anything pumpkin for the holidays works. Oh, I love pumpkin. Have you ever made the pumpkin roll where you put the cream cheese and confectioner sugar and all the junk in the middle of it that tastes just absolutely We've fine. did the, the bread with the braiding with all the filling in it. The, that type one, of thing. This yeah. one you roll out. You you. You make it with the in dough. A, yeah, yeah, you make it no. in a cookie sheet, and then you roll you you roll it up, and mm. oh my. I, I've mm. got to do that one vegan. I haven't done that. Yeah, one. I've got some pastries. I've got some Danish uh, recipes coming up pretty soon here. So mm, yummy. Yeah, yeah. When I do the baking, I usually use exact recipes. So you do the same thing when you bake, or you, you kind of have. It's to. one of the few times. It's one that, of those things that you have to. I know there's a science. A lot yeah. of them measure. You know, they'll have a scale in the kitchen. That's the best way to do it. It, it is yeah. the best way to do it, but we don't yeah. have the scales here. Yeah. I I try to stay as far away from scales as I possible. <laughs> <laughs> they are not wow, your you, You've been doing pretty good I on know, them lately. I know, but what kills me? Have you seen that little cartoon where where these two little girls are standing at the uh, at a scale in their life? I don't know what it is, but every time my mom gets on it, she cries. Yeah, <laughs> stay away. <laughs> yeah, stay Just away say from no. The scales. Well, this yeah. is one of my family's favorites. I really love this recipe that we're going to do today. Pumpkin, Pumpkin cheesecake. cheesecake. And you're thinking, cheese? Melody, you can't use cheese, it's dairy. Well, yeah, we have the tofu cream cheese yeah. that we use instead. I have a spring pan over there, Mark. Mm -hmm. uh, rather than a summer pan or a fall pan, you've got <laughs> yeah. a spring pan. And, and I'll tell you something, you could spend a lot of money when you go to the store to buy graham cracker crumbs already you know, uh, flake, done up. And what we did was we bought some nice ginger snaps mm -hmm. because I want that spiciness here. Uh, just put on, them in the food processor. And... Just in a food processor. And so we're going to do that ourselves and make it. Uh, you can use the maple cookies. You can use graham crackers. Graham crackers. That's, can, that's what I would normally use, think of. Uh, you can use like mm -hmm. a, a... Or Oreo cookies. Uh, but I hear those are really bad for you. Yeah, they are. There's something in them. There's some. There is, but but real... you can take. They do have the dark yeah. uh, cookies like that that are much healthier mm -hmm. that you can buy just yeah. to have that black, that chocolate light mm -hmm. crust, and that's really good. And we've done nut blends too. Nut blends. With dates oh, and nuts absolutely. And done I that, do that for bases. Yeah. Uh, coconut. I usually do equal parts of of uh, oats, coconut, and walnuts. Okay. Yeah, or oats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're. I, I do Boom. that, and especially when it's gluten free, mm -hmm. you know, because it's harder to find it's gluten free. What looks like butter back here? It is. Too. It, it is a little mm -hmm. bit. We're, mm -hmm. This is the holiday, right? So holiday. we know during the holidays we do things a little bit different. And let me try that for right now. Mm -hmm. But I want just a little bit of the margarine in there. If you hand me a spoon, there, Mark. And on the other side of the Vitamix, shake, 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 shake. you're going to see some cinnamon because I want just a little bit of cinnamon in here. Just a pinch. Pinch me in a little bit. Wonderful. Okay. And it, and it gives just enough flavor to uh, really set this off. Okay. I even, uh, a lot of times when I do a regular cheesecake that has no, mm -hmm. you know, spices or seasoning it just plain cheesecake i'll put just a little bit of cinnamon hmm. oh. in that in that crust and you just and my mother says you gotta quit beating oh on the use side. it all use it all come on <laughs> my mom says you gotta quit just beating on the it. side of the pans you do that all the time but depending what type of oil content you want you can right 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 um, 
What other, because this has to bind together a little bit, doesn't Just it? Just a little bit, not much. It doesn't have to be greasy. Because the liquid from the cheesecake is actually going to settle in there. It is. Make the breadcrumbs tighten up. It, so you'll exactly get your crust. Okay, so, so it doesn't need to. No, it doesn't. Could you do that without the oil? You can. It might just be a little crumbly. It is. Um, it is a little bit more crumbly. And this is pretty much the consistency I want right here. Okay. And then you can either use your own hands. You can use a spatula, a spoon. It's like, I'm like that. And in the in the restaurants uh -huh. with the cakes, we always go like that to is level out. Is that how you do the, to level yeah. it out? And I know these gloves are a little big because I don't have mark hands. One of these days, I will get you a set of gloves. <laughs> you yeah. say I've been that. saying that for <laughs> only like three days now. So you, know, you don't have to tell a guy 15 times to do something. No. Yes, you don't have. Oh, you're going up on the sides. I'm going up okay. on the sides just a little bit, not all the way up. Not all the way up. But I like it. I think it's pretty whenever, whenever you spring it out have some of the sides up on this. And some higher and lower gives it a, a natural look mm -hmm. rather than a process to yeah. look. But you missed a spot right there. I know. i got to go back in yeah. and fill missed it all up. a spot there, too. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, eagle eye. You, you knew exactly where I was going with it, huh? I did. You're not going to fool me today. That might have been yesterday. But see, it, it's not consistent. That's okay. You're probably mm -hmm. looking at it saying, oh, Melody, that looks kind of messy. That's okay. Sometimes that's what looks the best, though. That's it what does. gives you your visual. All right, and it's that simple. There's my crust. Okay. Um, easy enough? Yeah, easy enough. Now, mm -hmm. we have the Vitamix. And, Mark, I'm going to give you the ingredients, and if you'll just pour for me. Uh, you know me when it comes to lemon juice. I always like fresh. Mm -hmm. So if you can squeeze in. Here, you do that. Okay. Uh, you put them in there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. well, because oh, I learned like from that. my mistake. Mm -hmm. And then ready? Yes, ready. There's your lemon so juice. So you're getting at least a tablespoon or... of lemon juice. Mm -hmm. That's just to offset that balance. Mm -hmm. Now this is your coconut. Coconut. I, instead of using nuts, I'm going to use coconut cream. Now this has the thick in it, so and that's what I want. I want the this fat is a whole can that. of that's coconut a, milk. Almost, it's it's a cup. Okay, gotcha. So it's almost. Gotcha. We use so much coconut milk, that's fine. We do. We buy by the case. We do. I'm telling you, go down to the Asian food stores. They will give you coconut milk by the case. For like, like a buck? buck is it a can cents, or, Yeah, like that. it is so much cheaper. and mm -hmm. um, So, yeah, absolutely. And then here's your pumpkin. Okay. I'm and and I'm, what I'm giving him is my, my ingredients. Am I using all this too? I want you to use all the pumpkin. Okay. And that was a can, you know, your regular small ounce. can. Yes, yes. I think it's, is it technically a 12, 12 fluid ounce. ounce by volume? I think so. Is that how they think technically so. do it? Okay. And here's your cup of sugar. And we use the Florida cane crystal. So we use a mm -hmm. vegan as sugar. And you're probably thinking vegan. Well, all sugar is vegan. No, it's not. Cornstarch? Yes. Arrowroot powder, cornstarch, whatever you want to use there. Mm -hmm. okay. And over, do you have the pumpkin pie? I have it. Mm. A good, good teaspoonful. Of pumpkin pie spice. Pumpkin pie yeah. spice. I use that in oatmeal. Do you really? Yes, apple I, pie oh, spice wow. and pumpkin pie spice. I do love it in oatmeal. you put raisins in it too? And Everything. You know, yes. you know my oatmeal station. I love it. Now you have the tofuti cream cheese. Okay. And you have the little spatula over there. I want both of these in there. Okay. And these are, what's the ounce on these? These are eight ounces. Eight ounce. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, I do two of them. There are This is other, thick. Look how thick this is. It is. And I, I to, tofuti this, is my favorite. Some are thin. And I think Mark and I, we need to buy some of the different uh, vegan cream cheeses and try them. This has been non-fail ever since it came out on the market. Right. Yeah. I've used, I made my nut rolls with it, mm -hmm. nut balls, cheese balls, I mean. Yeah, I do those too. Yeah. Everything I use a cream cheese, it would have been dairy, I now use the tofuti mm -hmm. cream cheese. Do you know what the price is on these things? Was it they like three bucks? They run about three, three thirty. Yeah, so it's not much. No. And they have them on sale yeah. a lot too for five dollars, like at your Whole Foods uh -huh. and, and some of them, so. Uh-huh, okay. And that's it. Uh, serving size is two tablespoons, which seems kind of high, but that's two what most that's what most of your cream cheeses okay. are. And anything else going in? No, here? this is it. This is our ingredient. Oh, wait, no, mm -hmm. no, no, no. <laughs> he caught me there. This is a teaspoon and a half. 
on our vanilla. I know I haven't been to Mexico lately, so you, I don't yeah, have my where's the Mexican Mexico one. But yeah, th we, that's the good down stuff. There, I sure want you to bring me a big bottle of that back. You see what it says on there too? Non-GMO. Non-GMO. Wow. Didn't know they did that now. Love it. All right, so we're gonna give this. We're a blend. gonna we're gonna give it a quick blend here and get all the ingredients incorporated together. <laughs> you definitely got to be careful if you're going to do this at home and you know because you get that caught in there you're in you, trouble you've got only a certain space between the bottom of that but we're mm -hmm. so used to using them we pretty much yeah. know what our area but is. i thought of a concept i'm gonna have to invent it but yeah if you put a marker line on a particular spoon or something and then you just held it like this it'd be impossible to get down to that level it would. So I've got to invent something that would because create that. great machines, but sometimes things stick to the side and we want to yeah. get everything off of it. Now, oh my, isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. Now, did you taste it? I'm going to right now. Oh yeah, just Have grab me a glass. I'll just guzzle it. You know? <laughs> like an eggnog, huh? But the baking is going to pull moisture out of it. And the baking's going to, yeah. yes, and the cornstarch or arrowroot powder is what's going to give it the egg-like consistency that we look for in a cheesecake. Now, is it okay that you're... Yes, it is. Because this is actually going to rise a little bit, even though it doesn't oh, have baking powder. I was going to say, is it okay for your breadcrumbs to be higher? Mm -hmm. Sure it is. Mmm. Beautiful, isn't it? I like to get everything out. Okay. And, and this is little, ready to go in the oven? 350 degrees. You want to bake it for at least an hour, an hour to 20 minutes. And then I just turn the oven off and I let it set in the oven for a little while. I pull it out and then I refrigerate it before I take the spring off of it, you know, remove it from okay. the pan. Okay, let's do it. And right. we'll see you in a bit. Right, I'm it. doing my cheesecake dance. Bring me food. All right, me Melody, food. hot right out of the oven. There we go. Be careful, though, because it is just really hot. Just... That is not hot. That's good in the refrigerator. Feel it. Just. <laughs> we cooled it down. It did okay. come out of the oven. It's been in the fridge for an hour. Yes. Ooh, there goes my spring. Hey, looks pretty good. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Now, you know, Mark, I think we can transfer this. Um, I've done it before. Let's see. This is a different pan. Well, I can do a transfer if you want. Could you really? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, we have to slide that. That's going to be a slider. Um, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me entertain you. Let me entertain you. You don't want me to do the dance because I do that dance, but I can't think of her name. I got the one I need right here. You found it. Because you want me to transfer it? I do want you to transfer it. So what we're going to have to do, because I know what you're going to do. I know what you're doing. We're going to go like that. And we're going to take this off and then we're going to flip it on. To your, you want the presentation one? 
it. Do we have some? Oh, that's pretty. Yes. I don't know if it's going to fit. Let's see if it fits. It's sticking out a little bit. Is it? It's up to you. Let's try it. Go for it. Let's try it. Why not? You're seeing that this is the true thing. We're, we're trying okay. it. right? This is going to be a mess. Is it? It's going to be a mess. Here we go. Wow. Nice mess. A good mess. Yeah. You'd never see that on television, would you? No, you won't. Okay. So here, I'm going to just kind of... Clean that up? Yeah. And then you can chop away. Chop away. Chop, this chop, chop. This is the scary part because yeah, I have It's kind of nice having those crumbs around the outside. Here, I'm going to put some more crumbs over there. That actually has a nice look to it that way. And remember, with this one, Mark, we did not use... The regular crumbs we yeah. used. It might even still be a little warm in the center. It, and it will be, I can tell. So I'm just gonna pull this all out together. It is still warm. It is still warm. But we've gotta get things going. We do. We're in a kitchen. Oh, you got other stuff here too. I do have other stuff there because I'm gonna show you what I would do with mine. Mm -hmm. And I would put a caramel, you can make vegan caramel folks. It's a simple process. Just giving it a pretty look. I am giving it a pretty look. And then I would take my coconut whip topping. A little dollop will do you? A little dollop. That's a thick whip topping though. It is. That's not the Dea. No, Dea doesn't have one. No, this is so good. So, you know what I'm gonna do. Yeah, I do know what you're gonna do. What am I gonna do? You're going to top it with a little cinnamon or nutmeg or pumpkin pie spice or something. You got it right the first time. I don't even think I'd do more than that. Just no. Enough to say, wow. Isn't that beautiful? It's still warm, I can tell. It's yeah. still warm inside, but simple yeah. recipe, nice. Yeah, and it'll tighten up. I can see where the outside is mm -hmm. tight, but the it's center already, is just it's a the little center, soft. And the center was, was warm. So, I, could, right. I could tell that. So, but, but perfect. You know, we're rushing it, but that's okay. We wanted mm -hmm. you guys to see it. Beautiful. I am going to so take that. And I like these breadcrumbs there too. They I get, do too. Makes it look pretty. Yeah, you can actually take so. some of the breadcrumbs. Yeah. And... But now they know how to flip things with mm -hmm. plates. So That's how I yeah. always did it. I took one plate, transferred it over, took the other plate, put it on top, and transferred it back. We, to we teach them everything. We do. Concepts. Now what we have concepts. to do though is yes. we've got to uh, take a quick break. Let's do and that. then we're going to come back and show you all the fun things that we've yes. cooked on Let's this segment. Set up. Um, on this entire segment. Let's so, do that. Okay. Right. We'll Hi, that. Mark Anthony here with The Whole Message and just wanted to share with you some of the cancers alone that are directly related to the consumption of animal products. So if you consume animal products, you are guaranteed to have higher rates of these cancers in your life. Now, does that mean you're going to get cancer? No. And it does it mean that if you do not consume animal products, you will not get these cancers? No. What I'm saying is there is a direct correlation, though, between the amount of animal products you consume and the cancer rates of these. So ca cancers do happen more often from people that consume animal products. So these are cancers alone, directly associated with the consumption of animal products. Bladder cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer, kidney cancer, lung, ovarian, pancreatic, I mean the list goes on and on and on. Prostate, skin, stomach, brain cancer. And uh, so that's what's going on. Uh, and most doctors consider cancer a vegetable deficiency. That's their technical uh, vegetable deficiency. But what they're really finding out is that the abundance of animal products in your diet is what is causing all these cancers to increase. And the reason that is, is because every one of us gets cancer cells every single day. Now, when you have the right amount of oxygen in your blood, then your blood will remove those cancer cells on a regular basis. But when you coat your blood cells with animal fat and cholesterol, then your blood cannot get the right amount of oxygen it needs and it cannot remove those cancer cells. And boom, here comes your killer diseases of, of cancers. So you eliminate the animal products out of your lifestyle. You get that animal fat and cholesterol off of your blood cells 
and then your blood gets the right amount of oxygen it needs and it can filter out all these harmful cancers, all these harmful particles, these chemicals out of your system. And you know we're getting bombarded <laughs> by all these chemicals and, and stuff. It's everywhere. It's in the water. It's in the air we breathe, the food. We are getting bombarded by chemicals and pesticides and everything. So the number one defense you have is to eliminate these animal products so you can get the right amount of oxygen in your blood. And then your entire filtering system starts doing the job it's supposed to be doing. All your internal organs start functioning the way they're supposed to be functioning. And everything starts working. So the best thing you can do is eliminate those animal products and start living a healthier, more vibrant life the way God intended you to have. Our books are available on the website. We've got uh, Vegan Simplicity available. We've got Melody Prettyman's book available, Simply Yummy, really good, uh, great recipes in that book. Simply incredible, 400 pages, full color. And our newest edition is the Baby Steps to an Amazingly Healthier You. And this is a great 12-part DVD, has four discs in there, and it has a really great insight about how to take those steps one step at a time and start getting healthier. And so this is one that yeah, I think you'll really enjoy. And all these are available, chefmarkanthony.com. <sighs> Well, I think that was enough stimulation for a day. <laughs> <laughs> Don't need coffee when you're cooking in the kitchen the way we do. You know, Mark, so, I can't yeah. tell I When I get up in the morning, I just get up. I don't need anything to pull me out of bed. And that research proves that when you, when you drink caffeine, you have these stimulants that, that get you up. They drop you down, and, and you're in this yo-yo effect mm -hmm. all day long. I'm on an even keel all day, and I, I get more energy well, as the day goes on. Yeah, your even keel is a is little that? bit uh, higher, though. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm on an even keel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't need <laughs> it. I, I, you know, yeah. start out with God in the morning. Yeah. And, and exercise, exercise really helps to give you the energy. Sunshine, fresh air. So, even winter, I sleep with my window mm -hmm. open. Yeah, try that in Michigan for a day or two and see I how did. you feel. I did. It was kind of cold <laughs> in my room, but just yeah. a little tiny crack, but I like that fresh yeah. air. Anyway. That's our show for today. Um, the websites are available. Our phone numbers were easy to get a hold of. And we want to help you. We're here to answer your questions. So um, uh, share this with your friends and family. And we will see you next time on The Whole Message. <laughs>